Hey guys, Caduce here. I just wanted to bring you a quick little video on uh, just to help you a little bit with your cold email campaign so you land in the inbox way more. And one thing that's actually very, very overlooked is spin tax in your emails. And basically what spin tax is, is the ability to create different variations in your email. So, um, you know, when an email sends, right, you have your standard copy and you send that standard copy a thousand times. So basically these email service providers are like, this guy's sending the same copy the same, you know, to well, different people, but the same copy over and over again to different people. This must be spam, right? So it hurts your deliverability. Now, the way that you can mitigate against this is by creating spin tax in your email so they land in the inbox. And what that does is that it allows to create, uh, it allows you to create different variations of one email. So in one email, you can have different lines and uh, you know different spin tax, which I'll show you, and it can create 60 to 100 different variations. So every time it sends, it's actually a different email. So the ESP's algorithm, the computer's algorithm is gonna be like, oh yeah, so this guy's sending a different email. Yeah, yeah he's definitely okay right? So I'm hoping that makes sense. And I kind of want to show you how it works, right? So here, this is my sub uh, sequence in instantly. So when I send a campaign out and someone, resp uh, you know, replies with yes, sure, send it, whatever, I send them, I just automatically, uh, you know, instantly automatically puts them in a campaign where they get follow up emails of what, you know, what they basically agreed to the video that I, w I was going to send them. So with this, I'm going to show you how you can use spin tax to basically improve your deliverability, right? And mitigate against you, you know, just landing in spam. So this is the way you use it, okay? So uh, you use this little uh, random function here, right? With these two brackets, okay? And then you separate it with this absolute value line, I don't know, this vertical line, whatever, right? And you create different variations within these little absolute values, right? And it will basically... Um, it will basically create variations. So what it does is what this is saying is like, all right, at random, whenever this function triggers, I want you to use either this or this, right, at random. So when it's sending the email, it's gonna choose between those two variations, okay? And then right here for the second one, random, right? And then you have this variation right here, okay? Then this variation you can choose from, and then this variation that you can choose from. Right. So now, for example, right, this one is like best sincerely and best wishes. Right. And then I put a comma at the end. So all of these sentences will end in a period and a comma or whatever. So, for example, the preview, right, would be hi, sending you the video you requested. Right. Right after watching it, you can get your cold email set up. You'll sign one to three high ticket clients in 30 days or less. Best wishes. Best wishes. Right. Then we do it again. Right. Right after watching it, you can get your cold email set up. You'll sign one to three high ticket clients in 30 days or less. Best. Right. So it's changing. Right. As you can see. Uh, start sending 1,000 emails per day ASAP to sign one to three high ticket clients in 30 days or less, right? So basically, right, what, what it's doing is, excuse me, this message from instantly, what it's doing is spinning up different variations of your email. And the cool thing is you can actually check out this website here. It's called spin.me, sp1n.me. And you can put your email in, right, and then paste it in here and make sure the spin tax is working, number one, but it will also show you the variation. So right here, I have 48 different emails that I'm gonna be creating. So basically, the more volume you're sending, the more variations of your email that you want to have. So if you're sending 1,000, 2,000 emails per day, it's very, 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 very important for you to actually use a lot of spin tax so you have you know, hundreds of variations. And it's actually not that difficult to get hundreds of variations, right? So you can see like with only a couple of these random functions, I have two options here, three options here, three options here, I'm getting 48. So if I added one more or a couple more to each one, I'm already way over 100, right? Possibly even over 200. So that's how you use spin tax. I hope this helps you, um, you know, improves your deliverability, allows you to kind of delve into a little aspect of cold emailing that's not really, you know, it's kind of overlooked. Spin tax is very overlooked. But if you add spin tax in every single one of your emails, your deliverability will get way better. And it would just be better for you in the long run when you're sending these emails out. So I recommend using spin tax in every single email that you send. If it's a follow up, if it's a first email, whatever it is, always use spin tax. So thank you again for watching this video. I hope this helps and peace out.